Hey, sixth graders, Mr. Martini here again, and today we are going to take a look at the Dakota, but specifically their patterns of migration. And you're going to hear a few new terms today, so hopefully uh, you can pause this video whenever you need to or go back, um, but hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the Dakota lifestyle. So let's take a look. The first thing for you to know uh, is that the Dakota were a nomadic people. This term nomadic means that they moved consistently throughout the year. So they had homes, but those homes would change depending on the season. And a lot of this was based on survival, right? So you move to an area in, in a different season because there's maybe more protection or maybe more food. So this, this movement might have been born out of necessity, but it also grew to be a very big uh, part of their culture. And we're going to talk about that when we talk about the importance of a circle to the, to sorry, to the Dakota. So in order to make these moves, an interesting thing that they developed, because, I mean, imagine every year you move to four different homes and how tiring and difficult that would be to be able to pack up all your things. Well, they made developments, inventions, to help them with this. Um, one of those being uh, the travois, which you see kind of in these pictures here, that could be used in, you know, horses, dogs, people, anything to help carry the load, which is what's really important here. Um, all right, so let's take a look at Dakota homes in the fall or winter. And this is where we're looking at things like teepees. So this is a really interesting slide, and I don't have time to go through absolutely everything on here. But it's important to know that the Dakota lived in teepees made from long poles covered in in bison hide all right and we're going to get later on another lesson that's going to talk about the importance of the bison to the dakota people because it is massively massively important um so they they have these tp coverings they they kept them warm in the winter because of the thick layer of skin that bison buffalo have they were also uh, much easier to travel with because they could be broken down and kind of compartmentalized and made smaller for that consistent nomadic travel. Uh, I encourage you to take some time uh, to look through some of these more specific instances of what all went into a teepee because as simple as the idea is, they were vastly more intricate, more complex then we give them oftentimes than we now give them credit for. So take some time, look through this, and, and learn how sophisticated they were. Um, this is just another idea, uh, another thing for you to kind of take a look at um, to know a little bit more about the teepee. Now, in the spring and summer, the, D the Dakota would live in uh, bark houses. Now, notice here already we can see kind of some distinguishments right between the fall and winter when it's those colder months in in minnesota versus the bark lodges lodges uh that were for the spring and summer where it was obviously quite a bit warmer oops sorry i didn't want to go on yet um and and what i mean by that connection is the teepee with the bison hide created uh, an almost impenetrable force from the cold and especially the wind. Now, these bark houses, bark lodges, um, as the picture shows them, they probably look a lot more um, together than they are in real life. In real life, there, there are cracks. They're, they're not made with cement and brick that form perfectly, but rather that with wood that has gaps and spaces in between. So you wouldn't want to use a bark house in the summer or the spring because the wind, the cold is going to get through those cracks. Conversely, you also would not want to use a teepee very often in the spring or summer because 
inside of that bison hut, or sorry, inside of that bison skin, it's going to get pretty hot. So their choice of house was very reflective of the, na the nature, the, the climate in which they were living. Now, I mentioned before about the importance of a circle. And this is, this is really interesting. The circle was important to the Dakota because it was how they viewed history. Um, they did not see history as a, a linear series of events starting at, you know, A and going to Z, but rather as a circle that the things we do and the choices we make ultimately come back to impact us, whether it is us specifically or it is generations like our children or our children's children. Um, it's a really interesting and I think a much more better view of history to think that our actions always have consequences and they're not ones that we can easily escape. Um, I encourage you, please read this short paragraph here um, to learn just a little bit more about that viewpoint, about the circular viewpoint. Um, but you can also take this in other regards. When you look at their nomadic patterns, their movement patterns were in kind of, you know, circles. They started in one place, then they moved somewhere else, but eventually they came back to where they started, that circular motion. Um, and this is what I'm talking about with that, with that circular motion. You know, in the spring, they would live in certain areas. And then in summer, they would move or, or maybe they'd stay in kind of the same place. But in autumn and winter, they would move. And then they'd come back to it in the spring and summer again. Then back to the same spot for the autumn or the fall and the winter. Um, so they're always this circular pattern. Now, pay attention in these specifically to things like the foods that they would eat or the reasons they would pick certain locations. So for instance, in the spring, when it's starting to warm up and maybe animals um, are, are starting to breed, it is a great time to be hunting. And so they wanna be in places where hunting is very you know, helpful or, or, or let's say easier. In the summer, they might wanna be near riverbanks where fertile soil is. Because in the spring, the crops are going to grow. And by the time summer comes along, if you're in the right area, it's time to cultivate. It's time to, to take in those fruits, those vegetables that have been able to grow. So take some time to look at each of the different aspects of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Please don't get confused. Autumn is just another word for fall if you're not used to that. Okay, sorry. I don't know why that took so long. I'll try and go back and, and add that. Um, okay, so in the spring, one of the unique things that the Dakota would do is every spring they would collect maple sap to turn into maple sugar. This is so important because, as you might you know, know, sugar is a great source of energy for people. It's a way for us, for our bodies, to, to get the necessary calories and energy that we need to survive. Well, imagine living back then. You're constantly moving. You're constantly working every single day burning calories. So you need a food source that's going to have a lot of calories. Sugar is a great example of this, okay? Now I'm going to try and go back and see if this loads. It's not, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll add that somewhere else. Um, and then we have the Dakota wild rice. So at the end of the summer, they would have steps of harvesting wild rice, which would include, you know, having an offering to Untehi. They're, they're kind of one of their deities. Remember that the Dakota are not uh, monotheistic, meaning they don't have just one god in their religion but rather they are more naturalistic, thinking that there are many entities, many uh, um, gods. I don't, I don't like to necessarily use that, that term because I don't think that they would represent it that way. 
uh, because it was more naturalistic than that. Then two, they would tie those rice stalks together and, and let them dry. They'd then roast them so that they could keep it for long periods of time. And that's the whole idea behind gathering this wild rice is so that they would have food that they could store over uh, the, the fall and the long winter where maybe it's harder to hunt or obviously it's harder to gather uh, natural foods like fruits and vegetables. Well, they would still have their supply of rice to rely on. And that's what's really important is that forward thinking. They had to prepare for these winters. So make sure to take some time and go through each of these steps so that you understand what they are. Now we're nearing the end of chapter three on the Dakota. We're not totally there yet, but we're nearing the end. And here are some things that you should know at this point. Number one, Dakota means friend or ally. Minnesota Makoche is the name for the Dakota where, you know, the area of Minnesota that we know now. The Dakota were in Minnesota before the Ojibwe. And we'll talk about the Ojibwe in, in our kind of next unit, but that's important uh, to know right now. Oral tradition and history was very important to the Dakota. They used horses on the plains, but, but let's be specific. Remember that horses are not native to North or South America. Uh, they were brought over with uh, European settlers, specifically the Spanish, when they landed in South America. So horses, while important to the Dakota, are not native to North America or South America. In number six, they made maple sugar in the spring, talked about energy. Uh, they harvested wild rice to be able to make, um, make it through those long winters. And then they made tools out of stone and animal bones. Religion was very important to the Dakota, but it's different than a religion that we have today. Um, it was more naturalistic and, and more predicated on the individual. All right. Uh, now what I'd like you to do is take some time to go through the Dakota vocabulary that we've talked about. So... Some of these you should already know, the rest you will have to be able to, to find, but Minnesota Makoche, Generosity, Kinship, all of these you should be able to find in your textbook. And I'd like you to make sure that you write down their definitions. It's very, very important, okay? And here are a few more ideas. Now, these ones are not necessarily um, definitions but rather things that you should know and understand what they are and, and kind of how they're done. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.